Bob McNally joins me now at the International Energy Forum in Riyadh. He's the president of the Rapidan Group. Bob, thank you so much for joining us. When we look at the dilemma that the energy faces, the energy industry faces at the moment, really, what's on people's minds? What are you finding from this symposium and this roundtable discussion? You know, they're trying to make sense of the collapsing price of oil. It, that is the big uh, mystery. Uh, at first, the question was, um, could shale oil provide a bottom in oil prices and sort of balance the market going forward? That was the question last year. This year, as we meet Aetna, we realize shale oil is not able to play that swing, swing supplier role. So now industry and officials are grappling with the question, what will stop it from falling? So it's an uh, interesting coincidence that as we were meeting here, uh, some producers were meeting and discussing a possible freeze or other steps. So I think there's a, an awareness coming in that uh, shale won't replace OPEC, uh, that uh, the price will keep falling if nobody sort of takes oil supply off the market. So I think in the short term, that's what people are really looking at. Longer term, it's sort of the same question. How are we going to run this market? Is OPEC going to restore its swing supplier or price stabilizing role that it has played in history and before it the Texas Railroad Commission? Are we or are we out of that era and going into an era where inventories and price will do more of the market balancing? So what do you think? Let's have a quick look at the inventories because they're high right around the world and again that was one of the key issues here that was discussed when we look at those global stocks. Um, should we be worried about them? Should we be encouraging them to, to grow more? Can they grow more? And then what's the dilemma in terms of where does that leave the producers? Right. Well, we should be worried about them from a price stability standpoint because those swelling inventories, record high and still rising inventories, reflect this oversupply in the global market. Two million barrels a day last year, around a million barrels a day this year, partly as a result of the shale oil boom, but also OPEC's policy of defending market share and keeping prices, uh, keeping production rather high. So no question, and I know OPEC is concerned and analysts are focused on how long it will take to work off those excess inventories. Even if we start to balance on the supply and demand in the short term, we still have to work off those huge inventories that have been accumulated. But there's another aspect of it too that came up in these excellent meetings here at the uh, IEF and the CAPSARC uh, work roundtable. And that is maybe we need to have higher inventories. Maybe that's a good thing. Maybe that's one way that we can protect ourselves against uh, shocks and disruption and, uh, and the price volatility arising from this sort of absence of the supply regulator. So some folks were saying here that maybe the inventory builds, part of it may be structural, maybe structural, excuse me, maybe something we keep. So, I mean, it's structural as in that they're there, so therefore it just serves as a warning, perhaps, but would you advocate ever dipping into the uh, supplies and actually, you know, reducing them because there might be a need, or, I mean, where's this oil going to come from when people do need it? Right, well, there's two questions. There's the commercial stocks, which are used by uh, commercial private sector operators, and I don't think the government has or should have any role in that. But another question that came up here is whether authorities ought to use strategic petroleum reserves, which are there in case of a geopolitical disruption, for purposes of smoothing out price swings. Um, and I am strongly opposed to that, and some others agreed. I think there was a, a, a robust debate about that. I think there will be a strong temptation by leaders to use strategic stocks because this price volatility is not going to be enjoyable for anybody. We didn't enjoy it back in the 1920s and 1930s and we're not going to enjoy it going forward. So there will be a temptation to use the stocks, but there's a risk there that the use of those strategic stocks will be politicized. That's what came up in the talks today. And if that happens, what we'll do is just end up running down the strategic stocks and then not have them when we need them for a real emergency. So there's a dilemma even in the, the longer view. It's, there's a dilemma here for the producers in the short term and consumers again, but they really have to strategically think further. Um, I found at this meeting too, there was a lot of open discussion and open dialogue. Were you encouraged by that? This is the only the second round table, but again, the diversity of people who attended here. Um, I'm sure you met many colleagues from around. Give us a feel for how important that diversity was and indeed what value it was for yourself. Well, you know, Etna, you really have to go back. I've been doing this for now almost 25 years, and there was no discussion 20, 25 years ago. It was just among government officials. And the fact that uh, not only in the last 10 years ago have we seen meetings bringing together analysts, company, company experts, and officials, uh, is, is a change. And then in the last few years, the discussion has really opened up. Because let's face it, what's going on in the oil market has confused and surprised everybody. And we're all finding that this new openness is good because it's bringing together different voices, different views to frankly and openly share our confusion 
uh, talk about uh, various in interpretations and explanations and ways to think about the future. So I think this was sort of, this process is just the right process to have. It's getting better and it's just at the right time given the uncertainties in the global oil market now and going forward. And again, the International NED Forum now has been around for a while. Would you say that its role has strengthened in the last few years? And again, looking around, I mean, I think in the last two days here, the, the value of people that were here, the level of people, the level of conversation, and again, that openness that you talk about. Um, how important has that role been for the IEF? The, the importance of having that convening power, as I said, is only risen given the uncertainties and the tumult in the market and the ripple effects that's having. Because all of us in the energy business, whether we're officials or private sector, we owe answers to our colleagues in other parts of government and the economy as to what's going on. So the IEF is filling a role, I think, that is very necessary at r just the right time. And we're in Chatham House rules, so we can't say who is in the room, but you know as well as I do, the convening power is outstanding. Uh, senior government officials, senior OPEC officials, representatives of the major oil companies, uh, leading oil experts, academics, and so forth. A, a diverse uh, group of experts uh, and real, uh, real people with really something to add to the discussion. So that speaks for itself, I think.